So as we revealed live yesterday, a 55-year-old Cheshire mum remains in police custody after 24 hours for sending a, quote, inaccurate post on X on the day of the Southport massacre. Now, she caveated her post with the words, if this is true. She deleted it after two hours and she then apologised with beautiful honesty that you never get from journalists in the MSM. Yesterday afternoon, three police cars and a meat wagon pulled up at her farm as she prepared dinner for her husband and son. They carted her off to be locked up. She remains locked up over 24 hours later. This is the truth about life under authoritarian Prime Minister Keir Starmer, where the government now warns us to think before we post. And if we don't, well, we'll be locked up for a long time. That's no exaggeration either. It happened today to Jordan Parler, sent down for a Facebook post about the riots, which was liked by five people. He didn't attend the riots himself. He didn't take part in any violence but a judge sentenced him on live TV within days for 20 months. The initial post received six likes. However, it was sent to your 1,500 Facebook friends and because of your lack of privacy settings will have been forwarded to friends of your friends. The messages were therefore spread widely which was plainly your intention. In response to a post questioning why, you wrote, because they're over here, given life of Riley, off the tax us hard-working people earn when it could be put to better use. Come over here with no work visa, no trade to their name, and sit down and doss and then there's more people being put out homeless each year. They get top band priority on housing and many more reasons. You were arrested in the early hours of the 5th of August and then interviewed by the police. Your motivation became clear when you informed the police that you had promoted the idea of attacking the Britannia Hotel as a result of anger and frustration at immigration problems in the country. You went on to say that you did not want your money going to immigrants who, quote, rape our kids and get priority, end quote. Although you said that you had no intention of carrying out any act of violence, there can be no doubt that you were inciting others to do so. Otherwise, why post the comment? I mean, I guess there's lots of reasons why. I'm not defending it, by the way. But what I am saying is that a 20-month prison sentence issued within days when folk who rape and steal are still out on the streets seems completely over the top. No wonder the world's free speech champion Joe Rogan has weighed in. Yeah. Well, England, you know, people talk about Soviet Russia, like how bad uh, Russia is in terms of uh, cracking down on thought police and cracking down on bad tweets and things like that. I think the statistics are, I think England in the la I think there's something like 4,000 people have been arrested in England for thought crimes where they've said things online that people find to be a, a hateful thing or a problematic thing. And I think it's only 200 in Russia. Oh, wow. Yeah. That says a lot. Yeah. Maybe in Russia they're too scared to do it at all. Could be. Yeah. But the fact that they're comfortable with finding people who've said something that they disagree with and putting them in a cage in England in 2024 is really wild. It is. It is wild. It is chilling. This is not something that 
would even be comprehended as a possibility in the US with the First Amendment, no matter what way you look at it, after just a month of this Labour government, free speech has died. But surely the government, which is so clearly piling political pressure on the judiciary, can't have it both ways. So let me ask a question. Why does the Cheshire mum remain locked up, but not hope, not hates Nick Lowell's? who tweeted reports of coming in of acid being thrown out of a car window at a Muslim woman in Middlesbrough. Absolutely horrendous. There were no reports. It was a complete lie, which I know sparked violence. But in two-tier Britain, he faces no punishment. So this is clearly a political attack to shut down dissenting voices, which the dying MSM is getting behind, and shame on them. I mean, look at the sun today. The message from Brendan Cox, of all people, is clear. Only official MSM narratives should be allowed by the government. Well, the genie is out the bottle. That doesn't mean Slippery Starmer isn't going to try to legally roll back our rights. Those starting with the draconian online law, the online, the, uh, the draconian, sorry, censorship law, the online safety bill being toughed up. No wonder Elon Musk asked, why does the UK media, with a few exceptions, we're one, just parrot the government. Well, Reform UK leader Nigel Farage, who has also stupidly been blamed for the riots by leftists, he decided to answer Elon directly. Elon Musk asks a very important question. Why do the UK media, with a few exceptions, just parrot the government line? Well, I'll tell you why, Elon. It's dead simple. It's called consensus. It's called when everyone gets together with groupthink and says, open borders are fantastic. Come in, everybody. We don't care whether you speak our language or share our values. We don't care about the population explosion, meaning our kids can't get houses. You see, for them to admit, for them to ever, ever admit, all of them, the Conservative, Labour parties and mainstream media, to admit they got it wrong, would be to go against the worldview they've held for decades. They believe they are the be kind, lovely people. And anyone that believes in borders, believes in culture, believes in community, believes in country, somehow we're the bad dudes. There are some exceptions. I do my best and one or two others do as well. But that's the answer to your question. <clears throat> it is groupthink. It is a refusal to accept. They've got this horribly, horribly wrong, as we've seen on the streets of our country this week. Elon Musk. And the group think to blame a, a sort of free speech and access to citizen journalism on social media, to blame that for the riots is the sort of group think that Nigel's talking about, I believe. But sadly, that group think means very few people are standing up for a really simple principle freedom of expression, the freedom to report. So we must now support the independent media, fight the MSM and the establishment to protect our free speech. Because if this is where things look after just a month of labor, imagine how controlled we will all be in five years. You know, I only talk about products on this show that I use and that I love. This one's a little bit more personal, but the fellas watching will completely get it. And the ladies would do very well to treat their husband or boyfriend because this is a game changer. Let me tell you, men want grooming to be a one and done deal. So the days of using the same trimmer for your face and your privates are over thanks to our friends at Manscaped. They've come up with the ultimate package to keep your hairs trimmed. It is called the Beard and Balls Bundle and it features the Lawnmower 5.0 and the Beard Hedger. It's not the traditional sort of lawnmower, but believe me, the product will get you trimmed as freshly as cut grass. Yes, one for the money maker, another for the boys downstairs. The trimmer gets it right the first time. It's gentle on the skin in all your delicate places and with two interchangeable skin safe blade heads, you can choose between a precise trim or a smooth finish. It's also waterproof, which means you can trim in the shower, which is really handy. Next, I want to tell you about the beard trimmer. So whether you're going for a neat stubble or a full-on lumberjack look, this one has you totally covered. It features a titanium-coated stainless steel T-blade, 20 length options. And what I love is you can change 
depending on what style you want, using the brilliant Zoom wheel. Also waterproof, which means you can handle your beard grooming in the sink or shower without worrying about water damage. It has 60 minutes of runtime and an LED charge indicator too, so you will never be caught mid-trim with a dead battery. This is genuinely such a gentle product. No more cuts. You'll keep your loved one happy. And actually using this product increases your confidence too. The great news is today you can get 20% off and free shipping if you use the code OUTSPOKEN at manscaped.com. That's 20% and free shipping, www.manscaped.com. No more juggling multiple tools or dealing with subpar results, just efficient, effective grooming wherever you need it for the premium grooming experience. Trust Manscaped. And this is a case that actually is equally chilling to what we are hearing about. And so, Mark, I want you to talk me through this, but here is a graphic of a tw of an X space that you hosted at the weekend. And it was called, Are We Seeing the Start of a Civil War in the UK? You can see 1,500 participants. You went on for five hours, seven minutes, so lots of chat was had. And of course, this whole question of a British civil war was sparked by a post on X from the owner of X, Elon Musk. Now, you take the story on. You've never spoken about this before, so I appreciate you doing so. But hosting that space on X resulted in you getting a knock on the door from the police? Yeah, what, what happened was, uh, and thank you for having me on the, the show, Dan. Uh, what happened was I held a space uh, it was quite a lively space. Uh, there was um, uh, a lot of people in it. Uh, and we asked the question, uh, are we seeing civil war in the UK? Now, there is a lot of anger out there about what's happening. And uh, I stated on numerous occasions, and as I always do in my spaces, that um, violence is not the answer. Uh, we don't want to see any kind of violence on the streets. Uh, I condemned everything that's happened. Uh, now, the space, it was very lively. There was a lot of conversation about uh, what's going on. A lot of people are angry, and I don't think that's, uh, there's nothing illegal about being angry. No. Now, the space went on till one o'clock in the morning, uh, and there was still well over 150 people in the space at that time, even at one o'clock in the morning. Uh, now, the next day, I woke up and I had a lot of private messages telling uh, telling me, Mark, um, someone's talking about you in another space and they're saying that you were inciting violence and there was racism in the space, which I do not accept one little bit. Anytime I see that, I, I've interviewed politicians, I've interviewed uh, people that do campaigns, I've interviewed a lot of um, celebrities, you know, and... We, I do not accept any kind of that kind of language to get kicked out straight away. So I, 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 I wondered what was going on. And then someone said, um, uh, we were talking, someone had set a space up and invited me in. I went in, we were talking about it. And then I got a phone call. Uh, and the phone call was from the police who uh, invited me to a uh, an interview. Um, uh, not under caution or anything like that. It was a voluntary interview. And they asked me if I would go down for a chat. And this is the police in Scotland where you're based? Yeah. So I agreed and I said, yes, uh, um, um, I don't have any issue with that. So I went down. I took um, uh, a friend of mine, solicitor, who came with me, uh, went down. Um, I was advised uh, to make a no comment interview. Uh, I went in. Uh, uh, they they were quite nice, you know. They were they were quite pleasant, but uh, then they asked me questions on uh, what my views were of what's happening in the in the country. Uh, I obviously said no comment. Uh, they asked me. Uh, they said they went onto the space and said uh, your title of the space. Do you believe we are at civil war? Is that your opinion? And uh, is that what you think? Uh, and then I guess said no comment. Uh, they then asked me uh, some further questions and then told me uh, that 
in their opinion, uh, that there was no, there was nothing there. There was no, there was nothing to carry on with it. There was no incitement uh, that they could find, but uh, they were still going to be, uh, they still um, were going to have a look at me if I'd broken any hate crime because Scotland, we have a, a new hate crime in Scotland that uh, nobody wants and nobody likes. But um, we are, yes, they said that they would have a look at that and and, and whether it was a non hate crime incidents, which we also have in Scotland, which is very controversial, uh, which in fact, um, an MSP Murdoch Fraser, who's conservative MSP, who's actually going for the leadership of the conservatives, uh, got in trouble for just for yes. retweeting the post. So, so you are effectively still under investigation for hosting this X space. Well, they're still looking at uh, whether I've uh, committed a hate crime. Or, and did, or did, did they say specifically to you what had been said within this space for them to justify wasting police time on getting no, you in told, for an interview? No, I was told there was nothing that was said. In uh, they, they did mention, they said there was uh, quite a lot of people that were angry which I had to hold myself back because I, had to, I, I, I wanted to say, well, that's not against the law to be angry. No. There is a lot of anger out there. There is. But this, there was a lot of anger in the space. And um, uh, what was my what was my motive for setting the space up? Yeah, because this, said, is the, cause this is where they're trying to get people, you see. And this is what is so chilling because they're trying to say you could have been inciting violence. And that is why we've seen the 55-year-old businesswoman in, in Cheshire being arrested. I'm just so concerned about this. Did they say, by the way, who may have made the complaint, Mark? No, but we do. I do have some suspicions. We um, a post, uh, Only yesterday, a space that I entered, uh, a gentleman uh, who had um, said something about Islam, uh, nothing offensive, nothing a uh, that can be uh, what you can be called out for. But somebody actually, uh, because the friend was hosting the space, the actual space that he was in, uh, was telling us he was. Uh, he doesn't have his name on his Twitter account apart from his first name. Uh, they track, but they managed to track him down. Uh, found his Facebook page, got his full name found out where he worked, contacted his work, and he's been suspended because he had something about Islam on his on his Twitter account, and he's been suspended from work just for that. See, this is chilly. This is chilly. And I guess it was possible someone had infiltrated your ex space as well. Well, we believe the same person that had um, complained about him had made the complaint about me. Got it. So a bad faith actor. Look, Stay with us because I'm going to bring our superstar panel back in now. Myron uh, Central Nathan from Reform UK, Reform UK candidate and barrister, appropriately, Stephen Barrett, one of uh, Britain's top legal brains. So, Stephen, you're hearing this story for the first time. This is the first time we've learned about this. Sounds like it was a pretty feisty space on X, but isn't this ludicrous that that sparks? A police investigation? Well, if you want to, as a human society, you can start going down this very hard censorship route. You know, we did kill Sir Thomas More because of beliefs, we, things we thought he thought, although he didn't actually confirm either way. And it wasn't until Elizabeth I who, who brought peace and said, I refuse to, I will not make windows into men's souls. We have gone down this route before, I mean, query question in the 21st century, whether that's really where we need to be going, whether we have the resources for this type of policing. And again, I draw back to the, there are large, the, the key problem here is that there was a complaint and a complainant. So somebody who feels able to complain and that the authorities then became the servant of that complainant. And that's exactly what Ofcom do. It's exactly what regulators do. It appears to be what the police do. So what a lot of sort of broken bits of the state tend to do. They're led by the nose by these complainants, but that just makes the complainant the mob. Okay, that's 
That's what yeah. they are. It's their personal subjective opinion that, that that has been outraged and upset. And they're so outraged and upset that they must simply wipe from existence the person who who dared to upset them in, in any way. Well, that's that's a deeply immature society. That's a deeply childlike mm. response to being, you know, being denied something, to being challenged in your views, to not getting your own way. That that's not how an evolved and grown-up society deals with things. And it seems we stand at a fork in the road now and we can really pick. We can go down this censorious road and we know exactly where it leads because there's nothing new under the sun. We have seen all of this before and it will be just as bad as before. Or we can grow up. And that that really is our choice now. And because I don't do politics, Dan, I'm not going to make that choice for people. But people, th this is this is the time. The crossroads is before yeah. us. You know, it, well, it's, look, it, which, one, which one do you want? Well, Myron, you do do politics, obviously, and I presume you would say grow up, go and solve some real crime police, like look into the grooming gangs, look at into all look into all of the burglaries that are literally left unsolved. Yeah, I mean, what this shows is we are not a serious country. We are <laughs> yes. fundamentally not a serious country. As you said, as you mentioned, other countries and commentators are looking at us and, and the shenanigans that are going on and they are laughing. We are comical in the way we run this country. I seriously think in a kind of stealth way, we are exiting the first world in some way on multiple levels. And when you when you see this kind of um, th th this kind of authoritarian rule to invade this i mean this gentleman was ha had a had a had this ex group just simply saying will there be a civil war questioning out of concern you know because when you see so are we seeing the start of a civil that's that's a that's a concern and it may be a fear in people and people want an outlet to just discuss and have their fears allayed and maybe we can come to a constructive conclusion to actually de-escalate things as communities so it could be a very productive thing that that he was doing but immediately somehow the police pounce on it as with suspicion and that's how they've been trained as part of when i was campaigning i spoke to police officers trust me from mold from Surrey police to Met police, they won't talk openly about it. They don't want to whistle blow because their jobs are on the line. They are sick to death of doing this. It's, it takes them about two, three hours to process any of yes. these claims, right? And we don't have police officers on the street. Exactly. And it then we take about murderies and soft crime. It's crazy. It takes them off the streets. It is crazy. Mark, I'm so delighted though that you did feel like you could share this with us because that's another thing that I'm really picking up people are becoming afraid and sometimes that fear and i get it by the way drives people off they just think oh it's not worth it it's not worth it i don't want to take the risk but mark tell me you've spoken out today i think that's a great start what we need is people at x and people like elon musk to see what's happening and for them to take some action but will you be continuing with your spaces on x mark even though you know the police are now looking at them Without a doubt, without a doubt, because I think it is that important. I do believe, and I think um, I echo a lot of people that have come into the spaces and that talk about this, is that uh, we are we are facing difficult times, and our freedom of speech is being curtailed. It's it, it's been going on for quite a few years now. I I, I think yes, and 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 I do think that our um, that. If we lose our freedom of speech, we are in serious, serious trouble. So I do well, think, I think it's it, gone. Yeah, I think it's I, gone. I, I, think, I think we need to. I think it's a, a conversation that people need to keep having talking about because I've already noticed. I've already noticed on Twitter that um, uh, people's accounts, people are shutting down their accounts. People are not uh, not um, talking, posting a lot as much now. I've noticed with my own account, the views have gone seriously down and so is a lot of people's because people are scared in yeah. in speaking out now they're thinking well i might say something very innocent and next minute uh i could be i could be in the police station it's it, it's that serious so if it can happen to me it can happen to anybody so people yes. are scared and are worried about the way the country's going and i think and i think it it's a conversation that needs to be highlighted like on what what you're doing tonight i think it needs 
more more of these need to be out there because it is such a because we're not hearing it from the main mainstream no they don't want to discuss it because they actually want social media to be shut down which is crazy but there we are but look thank you so much for speaking up i will continue fighting this fight do keep me posted on what happens that is mark zegvelt who finds himself under investigation by the scottish police as a result of an x space which he hosted really bizarre thank you so much for watching dan Wooten outspoken please do subscribe if you want lots more clips and interviews like that plus if you want to watch our totally uncensored after show then visit www.outspoken.live